Okay, so now once you think you found out where you want to be, there's a couple things you want to check before you start trying to level and everything. You want to check and make sure that your water hose is going to work, connect. You want to make sure that your sewer hose is going to fit, as well as your electric. And then you'll go ahead and see if you can level from that standpoint. Now, just to kind of give you an idea of what I was dealing with here, as you can see, when I'm backing up into this site, you see I have the electrical pole and the water right here. Now, the sewer's also going to go right here, so my connection's right there, so I'm going to be fine with that. I went ahead and just connected the water hose just to kind of give me a gauge what I'm going to be doing here, and as you can see, I'm going to need to use my second 25-foot water hose in order to make this work. So that's why I recommend two 25-foot drinking water hoses instead of a 50-footer because it's a lot easier to be playing with a 25-footer at a time. So that's my recommendation. Now then lastly is my electric is going to be right there. Plenty of room for me to be getting that plugged in at the pole right there. So now let's check and see what the level looks like on this here. So if you carry yourself a three or four foot level, that would be beneficial to you. Now I've already gone inside just to uh, check it, but normally most of the time you can just check it right here across the V if you have room. And what you're going to notice on this particular one is I'm a little bit low on the door side. You need to raise it about two inches, which is going to be one 2 by 12 Now I recommend the 2 by 12s versus using the stackable uh, blocks do the fact that most of the time you're going to be on gravel, you're going to be on something maybe that's soft, and what will happen is they'll go ahead and sink, and then you're going to be on level again. So a 2 by 12 gives you room to error when you're backing up on it. So now what I need to do, I found my spot, just need to be pulled forward, set a 2 by 12 behind the tires, and back right over it, and then we'll be ready to rock and roll. Now what I'll do first, if it's just one of you, what you do is just set the, set the wood where you see where the tires are, set one behind it if you have enough, move forward so you know how far you need to be forward, and that way there you can put the wood in position and back right over top of it. Now, once you get it back, put where you want it, pull it forward just a few inches, and you want to go ahead and uh, put your chalks on if you're using chalks like these. If you're using the X-chalks where they go out against the tires, just put it where you want it. But at this point, I pulled it forward just a few more inches, and I put a chalk on both sides. And what you're going to want to do is you want to back up hard against these chalks because your tires are hot because you just finished traveling. And they're going to go ahead and, at that point, they're going to go ahead and contract as they get contract as they get cold. So then the chalks won't do any good if you don't have them on the chalk. So I'm going to put them in front, back up against it. Then I'm going to put one in front of the tires to keep them from moving. So as you can see now, we are going to head, we are, tires are chalked, good to go. We're ready to release from the truck and then level front to back. So after you put it over the wood, double check the measurement to make sure that your measurement that you did was correct and that you are level side to side. And then you're going to chalk your tires. Now something I highly recommend you get for your, under your tongue jack as well as for under your stabilizer jacks is pressure treated six by sixes. This is going to give you a better base as well as you're not going to have to drive down the jacks as far either.
Now, something happens when you're going to put this against the chalks where this is going to be binding. So what we need to do is we need to get the pressure from this ball off of the lock back here. So we're going to have to pull the truck forward just a little bit to get it unbinded. And again, it's much easier to do if you have two people. So now, depending on the terrain that you're on, all you may have to do is let off the parking brake, put it in neutral, and that should solve the problem. And that's basically what happened with this one. So you just unlock it, and then you're going to continue to lift it off of here. Do not put your stabilizers jacks down until you actually get this off of the ball. Okay, so now it's off. You just want to make sure that you uh, get the rest of your stuff off of here. So I already had the chains off break away, and now I have the, the electrical cord. Now I just need to pull forward. So now it's just a matter of us making sure that we're level front to back, and I'm able to look right on here. Looks like I need to come down just a little bit. And there we are. Now we're level. Now it's a matter of getting the slide out hooked up and so forth so we can start relaxing. So prior to putting your slide out, you want to make sure there's no obstructions. And I'm going to show you a way that you can actually determine whether or not the, any of the obstructions are actually in the way. Now before I put this one on here, I went ahead and made sure that this part, when I put the slide out, you can see I have still have a little bit of room between where the water and the sewer is so that the slide's gonna be fine. But let me show you a little trick. So a little trick that you could do is if you put your hand against here and you're holding it out and you see something that's inside of your shoulder, then you know something's in your way. Another thing you do is you can actually take like a broom or some type of a stick. When you have the slide out, put a piece of tape at the furthest distance. Another measurement you may wanna consider having is the height of your slide at the lowest point to make sure that if there was anything over here, tree stumps and so forth, that they were not going to hit the slide out. Now at this point, I would tell you, and by the way, I'm giving you my professional opinion. My professional opinions do not override those of the manufactured suggested uh, recommendations. It's just what I do and it's up to you to decide what's right for you and what's going to work for you. But make sure you refer to your owner's manuals for this. But I always say to put your slide out first, then put your stabilizers or your levelers down. And the reason for that is that this, this uh, RV or any RV is made square and level and that's supporting the slide outs. And so I don't see an issue with putting it out. Now keep, it, keep one thing in mind, if you put the slide out out with your stabilizers or your leveling jacks down, make sure that you're bringing that slide out back in with them down as well. Because it does do things to the frame and it does change things. So I'm gonna go put the slide out and then we're gonna go ahead and get ready for the rest of the stuff. Now for those of you that have the twist on kind, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure you line up properly and twist it on and then lock it down so it's not moving. Do that first before you connect to the pole. Okay, so okay, so let me give you a little better look at what we're talking about. So you see the little silver part there, that's for, for the contact, and then it has tabs and you can see the little indentations in here. So you're gonna have those. And then inside here you can see, well, on the end of here you can see you have holes. And then in here you can see you have the poles that are actually gonna be going inside of that's the male end, and I'm holding in my hand the female. Now you can see the little silver contact thing to the bottom left. So when you're hooking this thing up, as you can see, I have that silver part directly right by it. You want to push, get it pushed on there, and then you, you turn it and hold it there. And then what you're going to do is tighten this down. That'll keep it from moving so that you have constant contact there. So that's very important. Now I'd highly recommend that when you're, when you're hooking up electric, that you use some type of EMS type electrical uh, surge protector. Very important. Now this is the electrical pole. As you can see in most campgrounds, you're gonna have 50 amp, 30 amp, and then 20 amp. Nice thing about these 20 amps, if you, have, if you wanna run an extension cord over here because you wanna run some different electrical appliance things on the outside, you're able to do that and not cut into the amperage uh, that you're using on your coach. Now you're gonna notice on, on the campgrounds that the breakers are off. You're gonna wanna turn those things on 
after you put your uh, surge protector on there and then plug your electrical cord into the surge protector itself. Now after you collect, connect your electrical, come in and check to make sure that your refrigerator switched over. Now one other thing I want you to check with your refrigerator is because if there's a lot of bouncing going on, come down in here and check and make sure that this hasn't fallen out or fallen down because that's going to uh, select, that's going to keep your temperature cold on your Dometic refrigerator. So you have a temperature control at the top there as well as inside of the refrigerator. So now the stabilizers on these ones are the electric stabilizers. I don't really care for electric stabilizers, but I'll have to make do for today. Now what you're going to want to do is you want to get those 6x6s put in a proper location. Now you're going to notice that as this one's coming down, notice the other side hasn't come down yet. That'll come down once this one hits, uh, touches and uh, gets some pressure on it, the other one will come down. So I go ahead and get that there. And now the other one is going to start coming down, as you can see. So once you make sure you have things set right, just get them put down, and that's it. Now, so that's all the pressure that'll be on them. Now, hopefully between the chalks and the stabilizers, you're not going to get any, you're going to get very little movement on the trailer. Now, don't forget about your rear stabilizers. You need to put those down as well. You can see they're doing the same thing. I'm over where the button is. Now when you go to hook up your sewer hose, typically what I tell you to do when you're looking to buy a sewer hose, buy, buy one that is the thicker of the material. This one's like 25 mil, millimeters uh, thick, so it's, it's going to be last you a lot longer. You notice you have a clear end on it, it's two 10 foot sections. So now on this particular coach, I misspoke earlier, I actually have two connections. What I did was I went ahead and connected for the kitchen sink because we're going to be using the kitchen most and then I can just leave that open and let it drain. Now there are the slinkies you can get where you can go ahead and gradually take the hose and make it so that it can go in the hole. My thing is to me, I don't want the extra work. It's just as easy for me because I'm going to be doing it, if I have that or not, I'm still going to be walking that hose to make sure that it's empty when I'm done. And I'll be showing you that when we're uh, done camping this weekend. So do stay tuned. Now it's time to hook up your water hose. Highly recommend you get yourself a water pressure regulator and an inline water filter. You want to filter the water before it's going into your hose. Now, do not do like they're showing you on the picture here, where they're showing you connected to the camper. Never connected to the camper, even if you're using the extension. That's putting too much weight, too much force on your water connection at the camper. Always connect the hose directly to that. Now, if you want to use a 90 or a 45, uh, for you know connection to make it easier for you that's all well and good but do not put the water filter at that end so now if you're gonna be putting your hose if your hose comes up from underneath as you can see it's coming here what you want to make sure you do is make sure you put some brass wool in there so that way there the critters can't come up through there right now on this particular unit they had some steel wool but brass wool steel wool some brass wool as you can see rust I mean steel wool rust where brass wheel will not, and that's the reason why I recommend it. And then you hook it up. Now, if you have the Nautilus system, make sure that you're hooked up properly as well. Nice thing about the Nautilus system, it shows you when you're on city water how to have all of the different levers there. And you can see we're all set. And then, of course, you go inside, check, make sure that it's on, make sure your water heater is full, and then by opening one of the faucets on the sinks or you can even actually do it here if you have the outside shower and then you can turn on your water heater. Now is when things get to be fun and relaxing. So go ahead and get out your chair, get your favorite beverage and enjoy. Hope this helped you and I'll be back at you again soon. Give me a thumbs up if you're liking what, what you're seeing here, if it helped you at all. And I got a lot more coming, so stay tuned.